Good evening, church. Good evening, brethren. Welcome to Bergen Bible Baptist Church. This is uh, the fourth Wednesday. Okay? Akala ko Sunday, no? Fourth Wednesday of the month of March. And praise be to God for this opportunity once again to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen? Are you glad that you are in the house of the Lord? For our folks here inside the sanctuary. And also for our brethren who are watching tuning in in our online service um, magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat we have some viewers right now I believe 1100 in, in our list <laughs> so here we have some comments um, from Sister Lina good evening dear pastors and brethren so magandang magandang gabi po sa inyo and also for our brethren in the Philippines if you are watching if you are tuning in um, magandang umaga po sa inyo. Amen? So, as a way of our preparation to the Word of God, uh, I think pong guest is, uh, not the guest speaker, but one of our deacons here, Brother Glenn, will be preaching later on. And I hope that you are excited to listen to the Word of God once again and be challenged and changed by His Word. Amen? So let's sing uh, some praises to glorify our Lord. And may I request our audience here to please stand. And it's not an action song, but this is a familiar song to us. Do you know the song, I am a Christian? Not brother Christian. <laughs> but, Christian. but I am a Christian. That Christ is living in our hearts. Amen? So... If you know this song, I am a sea. So we will have a, a first um, a time to, to sing it and then we will sing it 
uh, for second and the last time. Okay? So, mabagal mo na po. Okay, on the... F- on, let's sing now. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C-H-R-I-S-T-I-A-N. And I am C-H-R-I-S-T in my H-E-R-T. And I will L-I-B-E-D-E-R-N-L-L-Y. Okay, nasundan po ninyo? Okay, medyo nakaka-tongue twister siya. No? Okay, so let's sing. Medyo mabilis, alright? Now. I am a C. I am a C-H. I am a C H I I S T I A N, and I have C H R I S T in my H E R T, and I will L I B E D N L L L L Y. I am a C, I am a C H, I am a C H R I S T I A N, and I have C H R I S T in my H E R T, and I will L I B E D R L L L. Amen! So, pampagising lang po yan. So, the words are, I am a Christian and I have Christ in my heart and I will live eternally. Amen? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, so let's sing another song. And this song is a Tagalog song. Really miss uh, some Tagalog song. Uh, Napakaligaya at kahangahanga. And after this, I would like to re- request Brother Christian to Open us in the word of prayer. Okay? On the first now. Napakaligaya at kahangahanga sa ating pagmasin. Ang nagkakakaisa, daging sama-sama na magkakapatid. Kahit may problema at wala kang pera, Diba't laging masaya Ganyan nga ang buhay Pag na kay Jesus Laging may galak sa twina Amen! Second now Napakaligaya at kahangahanga Kung tayo'y nagbabatyan Di naging gitan at walang tampuhan Kundi nagmamahalan Kay sarap magpuri, kay sarap umawi Sa Diyos na ating Ama Tinipon niya tayo na magkalapit Upang magkasama-sama Let's repeat the first verse Napakalingkaya at kahangahanga sa ating pagmasin Ang nagkakakaisa at naging sama-sama na magkakapatid Kahit may problema at wala kang pera Di ba't laging masaya? Ganyan nga ang buhay na pag Jesus Laging may galak sa twina Amen. Do you have joy in your heart? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, Brother Christian, please. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, loving God in heaven, uh, we thank the Lord once again uh, for all the blessing that you give to every one of us. Thank you, Lord. We are here again in the church, uh, in the Bergen Bible Blessed Church. Uh, thank you, Lord, for your loving mercy, for your kindness uh, to, to us, Lord. Lord, uh, please forgive of our sins, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, make us worthy at this time, Lord, to uphold your throne of grace. Lord, we pray that you... Uh, uh, Continue to be with us tonight, Lord. Uh, keep us safe while, while, while we're doing our Wednesday prayer meeting. We pray, Lord, that prepare our hearts, our mind for your instruction and for your word uh, at this time, Lord. And once again, Lord, we pray that uh, only your name will be glorified in our midst. This all we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Right, so thank you, Brother Christian, for that prayer. You may now be seated and let's sing our next song. Let's sing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. What a Friend We Have in Jesus. On the fourth. 
heard say, What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often trouble anywhere we should never be discouraged take it to the Lord in prayer can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows every weakness take it to the Lord in prayer on the last now are we weak and heavy laden covered with the load of care precious Savior still our beautiful song isn't it what a friend we have in jesus god knows our every weakness and we have to take it to the lord in prayer that's why we have our prayer meeting here and we have um, personal prayer time no sa ating mga buhay and we want to um to talk to god in that um prayer that god has given to us that is our access so Good evening once again and welcome to Bergen Bible Baptist Church. So at this point, we are going to have our um, praises and prayer requests. Amen. And if you have uh, something in mind and if you want to um, ask prayer or request, you just have to um, comment in our Facebook page or even in, in our uh, screen here in our um, online service. Okay? So... Let's have our praises first. Uh, first year or first anniversary uh, anniversary of our Saturday Saturday prayer chain ministry. Could you imagine one year na pala, no? So 52 weeks, okay? And this coming Saturday will be uh, 50, 53rd week. Okay, so praise the Lord for that. And thank the Lord for giving us a wonderful service last Sunday also. Our guest speaker, uh, uh, Pastor Mark Tierra, and thank the Lord for his life and his ministry. And also, these are the birthdays for the March, um, for the month of March. Okay, um, happy happy birthday to Sister Abigail Call in um, March 28. Sister Ashley Bautista, badalawa yung Abigail dito, no? Okay, so. Sino, sino isang Abigail? <laughs> All right. Isa lang, ay, pati Ashley, dalawa. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, no mirror lang. Kambal ba yun? Hindi. So, happy, happy birthday to them. Amen. Hindi <laughs> sila apat, pero dalawa lang po. Okay. And then, Sister Risa May Bernal on April the 1st. 
and Brother Christian Ace Bar Barbarona, April 1, and also Zion Joseph Del Mar on April 2nd. Amen. So, happy, happy birthday sa mga birthday celebrants po natin. And for our prayer request tonight, okay, yeah. First, we have from Sister Mayat Esposa. Please include Erica and Rowell in your prayers. Yesterday, yesterday morning, Erica was rushed to the emergency because of the shortness of breath. The variant of um, Varius is very strong. She already completed the vaccine. Let's pray for the Holy Esposa family who are in quarantine. So let's do pray for that, for them, that God will give them the healing mercy that they need. The whole family, um, Esposa family. And also, uh, let's pray for this a prayer request. Pray for the whole household of Pastor Robert and Sister Aimee Livioko's daughters here in NJ who had COVID. Please pray for healing mercy. So they ask a prayer request for their family here. So let's do pray for them. And also, if you know um, Pastor Narge and Sister Christina Magliari, a missionary in the Philippines, who are tested COVID uh, fast positive, are now staying in quarantine facilities. So please include them in your prayers. And God will heal them, heal them also. And also these are the requests also. Let's pray for the NCLEX review of Sister Kim Manalo and Sister Hazel Manalo. Safe pregnancy of Sister January Manalo. And the upcoming wedding of Sister Robin and Brother Gilbert. So let's do pray for those lists. And these are the lists that we need to pray for their healing. Uh, let's pray for Pastor Max for blood sugar level. A uh, uh, sister pass, uh, Norella, for complete recovery and health. And then Sister Looming Tolentino for recovery. And thank God we uh, saw her last, um, last Friday in our Bible study. Amen. Praise the Lord for healing mercy to her. And also um, Brother Kish Christian Lamson for his therapy three times a week. Okay. And also for Sister Silin from Sprained Knee. A sprained Knee. And also, let's pray for Sister Naomi Orbistondo for her dialysis. And Sister Emya for complete healing and Brother Manding for strength. Okay, let's include also Sister Mary Ann Revilla, Brother Hector De Castro, Edward Cave, Maria Sembengo, Dr. Myron and Mrs. Geiler, and Sister Shirley Rowalt. Okay, so for the others we have um, here, let's pray continually for the USA. Philippines and world government and national leaders. Let's pray for this, our conflict in Middle East and peace in Israel. In our church ministries, a virtual Bible study, prayer chain and prayer covenant every 3 o'clock. Okay, so let's do pray for that. And also our seven last sayings, or utterances of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross on April the 2nd. Okay, let's pray for our speakers, the seven men amen, that God will use at that time. Let's pray that God will give them the wisdom that they need and the strength. And also, let's pray for our Easter Sunday and cantata on April 4. Let's pray for pastoral staff, deacons, church leaders, members, and their families. Let's include also our unsaved loved ones, families, and friends, all the missionaries that we are supporting, at this moment and also the in incoming new missionaries for this year 2021 and also let's pray for our frontliners we have um, 37 from our church and let's pray for uh, uh, God's strength and help for them and also their family okay so at this time let's have a moment uh, let's have a prayer let's pray for this list and after this song, we will close uh, this uh, prayer time in the word of prayer. So thank you.
Let us pray. Our gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for this time that we can pray together as a body of believers, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for this need, O oh Lord, that we can um, give, O oh Lord, to you. Thank you, Lord, for those um, answered prayers, O oh Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God who knows our needs. And thank you, Lord, that um, you understand our desires, O oh Lord. And, Lord, truly, Lord, um, we want to express our gratitude and our thankfulness, O oh Lord, for the things that you have done. And for this um, request, O oh Lord, for brethren who are not feeling well, we uh, continue to lift them up, O oh Lord God, in, your, in, in prayer, O oh Lord. We know, O oh Lord, that you are the God who can heal a, any kind of sickness. You are the great Jehovah, O oh Lord God. Um, you are the healer, O oh Lord, great physician. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you give them the strength and the comfort that they need in this time. Help them, O oh Lord, to, to remember always your promises, O oh Lord God, and help them, O oh Lord, to have faith in you. And we know, O oh Lord, that without faith it is impossible to please you. And we would like to ask, O oh God, that um, help us, O oh Lord, to, to have... Um, to increase our faith, O Lord God, and help us, Lord, to, to be a strong Christian in this time of pandemic, in this time of trials in our life. Lord, uh, bless our, uh, our prayers, O Lord, and thank you, Lord, for those who prayed, O Lord, for this time. And I pray, O Lord, for our brethren, please continue to help us and guide us, O Lord, every day, O Lord, in our lives. We commit to you everything, all these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. So thank you, church and brethren, for your prayers. And this time, we now call Pastor Sam, our senior pastor, to give us some announcements. Thank you. All right, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Uh, welcome sa ating prayer meeting in this uh, rainy day. But praise be to God that you are still desirous to uh, praise God, pray, and hear the preaching of God's word. And it's always worth it to be in the presence of God and uh, just to pray with uh, our brethren with a lot of needs. And um, thank God, uh, last Sunday, actually, if you don't, uh, don't recall, we had uh, started having virtual online service a year ago, March 22nd, since we were hit by pandemic. So last year is already a year been doing it. So thanks be to God for the Lord's provision, isn't it? For the word of God has been shared we're able to reach out some of our family and friends and brethren who cannot be here. So to God be the glory for that. Um, we'll keep on doing it uh, by the grace of God. And of course, this coming Friday is the last um, Friday of the month. So we'll be having our TGIF Friday Joint Bible Study, of course, virtually. And um, yours truly will be your speaker. We'll continue our studies in the book of Revelation pertaining to the New Jerusalem in Revelation chapter 21. Then March 27 will be our 53rd uh, prayer chain ministry. And uh, Malapit, oh, yeah, it's also a year. Huh? So praise be to God that this is always a blessing to, to pray. And we can see the answer to our prayers. And uh, more than ever, we need to pray for one another fervently. Then also the same day, March 27, we'll have our ladies' uh, fellowship through Zoom. Uh, since a lot of ladies will be away, but Still, they want to fellowship with one another. And Sister Arlene Flores will be uh, the teacher during that time. So please support uh, your fellowship through Zoom. And then uh, also on upcoming April the 2nd, looking ahead, we'll have our um, Good Friday service. And we have um, uh, our Magigiting the Men from the church. They'll be bringing the message and looking forward to that. And also one of our current missionary, a pastor, in the Manila, Pastor Julius Matias will be uh, one of the speakers. So let's be praying for them. Join us in our prayer covenant every day at 3 p.m. on the ninth hour to pray for our speakers, for their health, for their families, for the message that God would have them to speak during that time. And also April the 4th will be our Easter cantata. And uh, if you want to join those Good Friday service and Easter cantata, um, Pastor Abel will get up. Uh, sign up for your attendance so we can um, distribute the, 
uh, the church uh, occupancy for everybody that would come. And also on that Sunday, we'll have our Easter cantata with 100 Voice Choir and, of course, the Lord's Supper also. And we'll be having uh, one service at 10 a.m. So please uh, take note of that. Put in your calendar our Easter cantata and Lord's Table service. I wish we could do the er early morning worship service again, huh? or early uh, sunrise service like what we did and in Jersey City, but um, now we're limited to do that, but at least we can still have um, that wonderful time. So looking forward to that, let's pray uh, with one another for that success. So thanks be to God for your presence, and um, before uh, we hear Brother Glenn, one of our deacons, share God's word. It's good to see uh, a lot of our deacons here inside. Thank you for your presence and for your prayers for one another, for each one. Uh, we're going to have a special music from Sister Robin Castillo, then uh, Brother Glenn would come and share the word tonight. Thank you. Just days before, Jesus had been joyously welcomed on the streets of Jerusalem. Now he struggled to carry his own cross through those streets. Isaiah had prophesied of him. He was despised and rejected a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering, pierced for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed.
Amen. Praise God. What a wonderful and blessed song. Amen. Uh, anong title? The day, you know? The, the day he wore my crown. Amen. Uh, I always hear that song every time um, uh, Easter. And it, it always bless my heart. Praise God. Well, uh, patuloy po natin. Um, again, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat dito sa Amerika. And I believe we are uh, also uh, being uh, seen sa... Uh, mabuti na lang si Brother Robert. Sinay niya, sana ko nakalimutan ko na. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, again, maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. And uh, good evening po sa atin dito sa Amerika. And good morning naman sa atin sa Pilipinas kasi alam ko na meron po tayong mga kasama, mga kapatid sa Panginoon na nanonood at uh, nakikinig din from the Philippines. So maganda umaga naman sa Pilipinas. So marami po tayong dapat ipagpasalamat sa ating uh, Panginoon. Marami tayong ipagpasalamat sa ating uh, mahal na Diyos. And we just continue to praise God dito sa platform na ibinigay, natin, ibinigay sa atin uh, obviously because of the pandemic. Marami pong mga nangyayari at uh, kailangan mag-ingat tayo. But in spite of that, we came up with this platform na Zoom at uh, magkakaroon tayo ng uh, uh, messages pa rin na marinig sa ating mga pastors, sa ating mga deacons, sa ating mga leaders, sa ating mga teachers at patuloy tayong makikinig sa salita ng Panginoon Diyos. Amen. And patuloy natin ipanalangin na... Kasi alam naman natin, nakita natin sa mga announcement, di ba? Si Sister Robin and Brother Gilbert, malapit na silang alam nyo na kung ano mangyayari. So, ang mawawala na ako ng singer ngayon. So, ang papalit si, sino na? Ayun, si Sister Cora. So, ipag-pray natin. <laughs> Palagi ko, mapipilita na siya ngayon. Kasi, ano na, magiging, uh, um, sabi sa akin ni Sister Robin, ang pronunciation ng mga Amerikano sa balitaan. Hindi balitaan eh. Ha? Bal, ano? Ba, ano? Uh, babali muna. Ay, sir. Balitan yata, balitan. Yun yata ang pronunciation. Sabi ko, Gilbert, siguro pagka nag-US citizen ka na, uh, sabi, ano na, Gilbert News na ang gawin mo para mas madali. <laughs> para hindi mahirapan yung mga Amerikano. Well, that's kidding aside, oh. Obviously po, dapat natin uh, sundin ko ano man ang ating apelido. And I'm just kidding. And I, I can't um, ask for more sa blessings na ibinigay kay Robin. So obviously, um, nakatag po siya ng isang uh, lalaki na godly. And uh, I couldn't ask for a more Christian uh, uh, boy or man na mapapangasawa ni, bro- ni Sister Robin. And I really thank God that... that, that Nagkatagbo sila. Can you imagine dito sa church, ha? Ito mo, marami nangyayari talaga dito sa loob ng simbahan, ano? Dito sila nagkakilala. Dito sila nag, uh, alam mo na, nagkaroon ng pagkakataon na magkagustuhan. So, yan. Sa so, dito sa church natin, ang karamihan po sa ating mga bata dito, mga anak natin, lumaki sa loob ng simbahan na ito. And dito na rin nakapag-asawa. Dito na rin nakakita ng mapapangasawa sa loob ng simbahan na ito, di ba? What a blessing. And I really thank God. I really thank Bergen Bible Baptist Church. Unang-una sa pamumuno ng ating mahal na pastor, Pastor Max. And uh, obviously, Pastor Max was the one who uh, initiated and started this church. I really thank Pastor Max and Ati Josie for starting this church. What a blessing. What a blessing. And dito tayo lumago. Dito tayo ika nga nagkaroon ng uh, faith. A strong faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen to that. So, marami tayong happy, happy birthday sa ating mga binanggit kanina ni Pastor. And also sa ating mga prayers, mga prayer requests natin, patuloy natin silang ipanalangin. Let's continue to, to pray for them, lalong-lalong na yung mga may sakit. Let's continue to pray for them. Amen. Bueno, ang ating pong lesson ngayon, I really thought about this. And I said to myself, uh, we need to have something like a revival message. Something that will really move us a little bit and something that will remind us of the power. We already know the power of God, but we sometimes we need to be reminded. Not only of the power, but the superpower of the Word of God because it's not, it, it's not, a ho, it's not only holy, but actually it admonishes us 
to change lives. Amen? So, ang atin pong lesson ngayon is, uh, I believe, uh, para pakita ni Pastor, is the power to succeed. Now, uh, on first glance, you might think, teka muna, parang secular yata ang message ni Brother Glenn. Well, as I give the message, you will find out that I'm not talking about the power to succeed secularly. I'm talking about the power to succeed as an individual or as a Christian and as a church to praise and give uh, and give more praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. So that's what I meant and we will also discuss ano ba ang right definition biblically ng succeed. Because obviously sa secular there is also a meaning for succeed in a secular way. But we will be talking about the biblical way on how to succeed as a Christian and also as a church as a whole. Amen to that. So, bago po tayo mag-opening prayer, basahin muna natin ang ating key verse. And the key verse, I believe, is Acts 4. If you open your Bibles with me, Acts 4 and 3 verses is our key verse. And I will read, sundan nyo na lamang po ako, Verse 31, the Bible says, Acts 4, verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken, where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that both of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we come to thy throne of grace. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be gathered once again for our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Without you, Lord, we are not able to accomplish anything. We are not able to gather because of this pandemic, but by your grace and by your guidance, you gave us this platform that we're able to continue preaching your word, being blessed by your word. Continue to bless us, Lord, and guide us and keep us protected from this COVID-19 and a lot more of this uh, pandemic going on around, not only in New Jersey, but all around the world. Keep us safe. And I pray, Lord, that this uh, pandemic will be over once and for all by your, by your greatness and by your healing mercy. Father, we just continue to pray also for Bergen Bible Baptist Church. I pray, Lord, that we will continue to have our strong faith and our strong opposition to the devil. And this church will be a lighthouse. This church will be someone, a church that will continue to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for our leadership. Thank you, Lord, for your love to us. And Lord, guide my lips as I deliver this message. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God. Amen. So when all... The power to succeed. Ita niya na. I'm not only talking about succeed, but also the power to succeed. So, in the book of Acts, we found that, that we find in our Bibles, records for us show the history of the early church and how God used ordinary people to build His kingdom. Now, take note, I said ordinary people. Jesus did not use extraordinary talented people. Ordinary people ang ginamit po niya to build his kingdom. While we call it the Acts of the Apostles, it will, be, it will be more accurate to call it the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Because the truth of the matter, if you study the scriptures, these men were actually moved by the Holy Spirit. And it was the Holy Spirit moving through them in their hearts and by the apostles that allowed the church to move in power is through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Now, dito po sa atin, dito sa audience natin inside our church, 
some of you have attended and are my classmates in Faith Bible Institute. I'm sure you all remember that. Um, medyo mahigpit nga ang principal natin, si Pastor Sam, pagka nag-exam. <laughs> but you know what? That is a, a, not only a blessing to me, but a super blessing to my heart. That lesson, that Faith Bible Institute opened my eyes and I learned a lot on that series of lessons and teachings. I remember, I believe, the, uh, the professor, Pastor John uh, y- Yates, Pastor John Yates. And the way that the Lord used Pastor John Yates is not only in a mellow or a slow, but in a powerful manner. And some of you who are my classmates in Faith Bible Institute, you will agree with me that the way he delivers the message, the way he delivers the lessons, is not ordinary. He is actually gifted by the Lord to teach us in a powerful manner and in an understandable manner. Kasi hindi naman po sa pagano, and uh, all of us here are naka-experience naman tayo obviously sa mga schools natin. Meron kasi kung may siya nagtuturo, nakakaantok. Huh? Um, I will never forget when I was in the Philippines um, uh, pag pumasok na yung aming uh, teacher sa third uh, high school ako noon, high school third year high school pag ang topic na namin ay history at dumating na yung teacher namin ay mag-uupi siya na ako matulog <laughs> kasi talagang pag nagsalita siya ma- ano eh, makakatulog ka eh Instead of man, ka, may, may, may engage ka in everything. Dahil sa hina ng boses, uh, the way he delivers the lesson, makakatulog ka talaga. But Pastor Yates in our Faith Bible Institute is not only powerful but engaging. The way he delivers the lesson, you will really understand the lesson in a very powerful manner, in a alive manner. So I vividly remember sitting in our Faith Bible Institute in a class in the book of Acts. And having Pastor John Yates explain to us all the wonderful ways that God worked through his people in the days of the early church. And for three hours each week, three hours nga ba, mommy? Uh, I think it's like uh, four or five yata <laughs> each week. It doesn't really matter four hours or five hours, but three, uh, uh, five hours is studying, memorizing, researching, and taking notes. I really learned a lot, and I think my classmates in Faith Bible Institute will also agree with me that we really learned and engaged. But here is one thing, and I don't know if you will agree with me, but through all of our study, gamitin ko na lang sarili ko, my study, both then and now, and during the time that we were sitting and uh, listening to Pastor Yates, a nagging question kept creeping in my mind. And the question was this. After all the lessons that Pastor Yates did in the book of Acts, as, I, as far as I can remember, this is the nagging question in my mind. If God could do such wonderful things through his people back then 2,000 years ago, why not now? I found out that when I asked people that question, I got one of two reactions. Number one, extreme discomfort. And number two, excuses for why God doesn't work that way anymore. But you know what? Here is my contention. The fact is there is nothing in the Bible to suggest that God has quit working with power through his people. And I have come to the conclusion that the fault does not lie with God, but with those of us who claim to follow him. It is not the fault of God. It is sometimes the fault of the followers who are Christians. And, what, and, I, and I want to do what I, can, what I can to change that tonight, this lesson. And that is why I'm giving this message tonight about the acts of power through the power to succeed by the grace of God and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. 
Because I believe that God can do through us what he did through the early church if we still become willing participants at this time. Tonight, I want us to examine some scripture in the book of Acts that will teach us how to succeed as individual Christians and as a Christian church. Amen to that? So, yun po ang ating introduction. I want to make sure that we understand that. We're not talking about the power to succeed secularly. We're talking about the power to succeed in the church as a Christian. Because sometimes we fail, not because of God, not because of the Holy Spirit, but sometimes because of us. Nangihina tayo kung minsan sa Panginoon. So I'd like to begin by giving you a biblical definition of success. But before I do that, let's do the first a definition of success secularly. Now, some people outside of Christianity, secularly, when you ask them what is success, sometimes people will say, well, success is a big house. Success is a high-power, high-paying salary. Or success may be a powerful position in the government. Or maybe an influential position in your place of work. Or maybe success is a flashy car and a beautiful house. And maybe some people, success is a lot of money in the bank. Success is wealth. Success is all those things which you see and it's shiny and flashy and all those jewelry and all those wealth and all those properties, those are success. Now, wait a minute. They forget something. The reason why they have that type of success and, even, and obviously they're, they're not biblical is because of the Lord Jesus. You cannot get all this success that they're mentioning without the grace and without the blessings of God. And so, my definition of success, biblically, is very simple. Accomplishing what God wants me to accomplish. Accomplishing what God wants me to accomplish. That is my definition of success in our lesson for tonight. This contrasts widely with most definition of success secularly that you will find. But I think it accurately reflects what success is in God's eyes. We need to accomplish things that God wants us to accomplish. And if we can accomplish what God wants us to accomplish as individuals and as a church, we will be successful indeed. And the good news is that God supplies us with everything necessary for us to be successful in that way. The power to succeed. And there are three points I mean, now five. I have five points that I will discuss on how to do that. How do we become and how do we achieve the power to succeed as an individual Christian and as a church? First one, number one. We can only succeed because we are given the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Tignan natin, ha? Tignan natin. Acts 1.8, anong sabi ng banal na kasulatan? But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the other part of the earth. Amen. So the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I still believe that you cannot do that without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, kami po, tatlo kami magkakapatid. Obviously, uh, some of you already know, uh, ako ang panganay sa family namin. My sister, si Mylin, uh, she, obviously she is in the Philippines. And uh, some of you already met my brother who lives in Canada. And um, by the way, hindi pa pala sumasagot mami. Ano? Uh, kasi nga, because siguro of the pandemic, baka hindi sila makapunta rito sa wedding ni Robin because of this pandemic thing going on in Canada also. So, so, so yeah, I have a brother who lives in Canada, and ito nangyari, my brother used to have an old pickup truck back in the Philippines. Ngayon mga kapatid, nakabili siya ng ano nun, nasa Pilipinas pa kami. 
And I don't know if you still remember, uh, noong mga panahon ng, uh, sabihin na natin, ng panahon ng 19 forgotten pa, uh, aramihan sa inyo dito, mga medyo bata-bata pa ng konti. I don't know if you, if, I don't know if you still remember uh, ang mga sasakyan sa atin sa Pilipinas para malaman mo kung meron ka pang gas sa tanke. Tandang-tandang na ako, may da, palagi kami may dalang pat-pat. At ipapasok mo doon sa ano, para malaman mo kung may gas pa wala. You remember that? Yeah? Uh-huh. Di ka tulad dito, di ba? Automatic lahat. Lahat, pipindutin mo. Gauge, bagita mo. Doon hindi. Ang gauge ko, yung pat-pat. Bubuksan ko yung gas, ipapasok ko yung para malaman ko may, may, may gas pa ba dito? Wala na. So, yun ang nangyayari palagi. In order for us to find out kung may gas, yun. At kung ano na, kung konti na, may kita ko, oh, oh, kung konti na, maubos na tayo ng gas. pag tayo. Some, sometimes I think most of us run like that in our spiritual lives. Because we don't rely on the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Palagi natin chine-check, check, check, check. Pero kung faithful tayo, eh, pero kung palagi tayong on fire for the Lord, we don't need to have that gauge. Kasi alam na natin eh, somehow we forget the fact that God Himself lives within us to empower us to be successful in everything He has called us to do. Amen? Following Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection from the dead and just prior to His ascension into heaven, He made that promise to us. Kababasa lang natin. Now the Bible clearly tells us that the Holy Spirit is God Himself and here Jesus promises us that the Holy Spirit will indwell each believer and two things will happen. Ano yun? Number one, they will receive power. Number two, they will tell people about Jesus. Amen. And obviously, these two things are connected. They were for those disciples 2,000 years ago, and they are still connected for us today. If you want to be successful as a Christian, you must rely upon the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to enable you to do the ministry. Do not rely on your own. Rely on the Holy Spirit's indwelling in you. The power is not mine. The power is not the church's. The power is in the Holy Spirit's power given to us to use to accomplish what God wants to accomplish in us. Amen. Now, when we begin living as if we truly believe that God is literally indwelling in our hearts, as I believe we will begin to live differently and we will accomplish a whole lot more than what we are presently accomplishing because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Di nyo napansin pagka ngayon na Christian na tayo. Anything that you do, and sometimes you're about to do something, and if you're not sure what you're about to do something, I don't know if it happens to you, but sometimes something is preventing you to do that because it tells you that don't do that because that's, that's wrong. I don't know, I mean, but for me, it happens. What I'm about to do, but something is preventing me or something is stopping me. And I guess that's the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We are now a different creature, sabi nga. Hindi na tayo katulad po nung dati. Na kahit na ano lang, barabara ko ano, sige, sige. Pero it's different now because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Number two, we can succeed because we are given a supernatural power. Acts 2. Pasahin natin. Punta tayo sa Acts 2. Acts 2, 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We can succeed because we are given a supernatural power. When you have God living inside of you, empowering you to accomplish His will, I think we can safely say that the power is of a supernatural nature. Amen? Amen. And, when, and, and what we mean by, this, by supernatural is that it is a power that violates 
or we could say goes beyond natural forces. In other words, it cannot be explained scientifically within the confines of natural law, but only by a force or a presence beyond the limitations of humanity. And what I am trying to get across here is this. If you are a Christian, you are indwelled by the Holy Spirit of God, which means that you have a supernatural power at your disposal to assist you in accomplishing what God wants you to accomplish. Jesus promised to his disciples and was fulfilled in just what we read in Acts 2, 1 to 4. We know that. Now, my purpose in quoting this scripture is not to get into a discussion of whether speaking in tongues is for today or not, as that discussion usually is entered into only by those who don't want to deal with the bigger issue. Here's the thing. And the bigger issue is this. The Holy Spirit will use supernatural means to see His will accomplished. And that is true, not only in their generation, but also in our generation. Hindi lang po yan nung nangyari nung time na yun. We can be given supernatural powers. And that is biblical. Kala ba natin nung lang nangyayari yan? If the Lord will allow it, we can do it also right now. Because the God that they had 2,000 years ago is also our God right now. It's the same. And I praise God for that. He will empower us supernaturally to see that anything can become a reality by the indwelling of what? Supernatural power that only God can give. Only God can give that. Hindi po basta-basta. Now, meron po mga forces ng evil, pero obviously, iba ang pakay nun. Hindi yung katulad ng pakay ng Panginoon to, give, to be a blessing. God's will that He wanted to accomplish was to win these people over to a relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ, and He provided the supernatural means necessary to get this done. When we are tuned into God's, He will use the means necessary to see His will accomplished and when His will is accomplished, we have been successful. Amen. So perhaps you're fearful of telling others about Christ or about getting involved in a new ministry God has called you to or stepping out in a faith venture, but when you realize that God will work through the supernaturality, supernaturally to see His will accomplished, you'll begin to understand that the power is available to do whatever is it that needs to get done through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no need for that fear when you know that God has supernaturally empowered you or empowered us. The purpose behind God giving these people the ability to speak in languages they had not previously known was not for prayer, it was not to impress others, but was specifically given to win more people for the kingdom of God. Whether God uses tongues in these days and age is open for debate. But what is clear is that God will use various means to get His message out and that He has empowered us as one of those means. Amen. Now, tayo po mga Baptists, hindi tayo naniniwala sa speaking of tongues. It just confuses us. But you never know. If the Lord gives us and grants us, obviously, he can do and use whatever it means. So supernatural power, we can do that. Number three, number three, we can succeed because we are given a vision for the future. Amen. I love it. Acts 2, 17. Basahin po natin. Acts 2, 17. Ano sinabi ng banal na kasulatan? And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. When the Apostle Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit and began to understand that supernatural power was available to him, he was changed from a wimp 
into a warrior. Amen. From a spineless turncoat to a fired up, bold, fearless a spokesman for God. And he stood before a crowd of thousands and quoted the prophet Joel. Ano siya nabi? Yung ating key verse 217. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. Amen. Tingnan nyo ha, very important. The last days were the days ushered in by the Messiah, Jesus Christ. It is the period of time from the beginning of the church until Christ's return. In other words, it is the period of time that we presently live in, and in this time, it was prophesied that, we, that it would be a time of prophecy, visions, and dreams. Amen. A vision for the future. Sabi nga nila, where there is no uh, vision, people will perish. Diba? Alam na natin yan. Eh, kahit po sa, kahit po sa, ano, sa business, pagka walang vision ng leader, eh, walang mga yale. Wala kayong patutunguhan. There is no specific goal. We are not told when each and every prophesied by Joel would take place. Only that they would all take place sometime during these last days. What is important for us to note is that this period of time is a time to see God's vision for the future and for the church. That means that we are given the ability to plan, the ability to develop, the ability to work toward that day when Jesus returns. God has revealed to us and will continue to make it known. His vision for the future as Christians that we must do is simply obey His direction if we are to be successful. Obey lang tayo. And I always hear our pastors, and I thank God for our pastors that continually preach the Word of God, give us the right direction, give us the vision. I really thank God for that. The vision for the future. It is a time of clarity, a time of focus, and a time when God's people are successful because they are seeing things through God's eyes and doing things according to God's will. Amen. And that is what our pastors are preaching all the time. We need to have a vision, a clear vision of where this church is going. Kita niyo na, kahit may pandemic, nakita niyo naman ang leadership ng ating mga pastors. They have a vision. Kahit na meron tayong pandemic ngayon. Amen to that and we praise God for that. Number four, number four, the power to succeed. Is we can succeed because we are given, and this is my favorite actually, a message that changed lives. What a powerful message that we give to people. Amen? And wag na po tayo lumayo sa akin na lang buhay. I mean, I really thank God that I, I, I was shared the gas pair when I was in uh, California. And I'm, 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 I'm just trying to look back at my life. And maybe, uh, obviously, I cannot speak for yours, but I can only speak for myself. Probably, if I have not, you know, I have not met the Lord Jesus Christ, and maybe if I have not really become a Christian and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, probably, baka anong dalita ko yun? Kung baka I'm six feet under the ground. Um, most of my friends in the Philippines, who are also my age, uh, some of them are sick, some of them are already dead uh, because of vices and because of too much drinking. And too much, uh, you know, they, they just t- take everything for granted. And, and I just thank the Lord. I mean, obviously, the Lord has a plan for myself, and, they ha- and the Lord also has a plan for yourself. But I just thank God because this message, this message that we read in the Bible really changed lives. If you want your life to change, don't go and don't, don't read, you know, uh, Books, obviously there are books that can help you. If you go to Amazon, if you go to Barnes & Noble, there will be books that you can read, yes. But there's only one book that can really change your life, and this is the Holy Bible. This is the only book that can really change your life. And those books that you can read outside are only additional to help you improve. But this is the Word of God. The Spirit imparts, imparts to us words 
that when shared with those around us, have the potential to change people's eternal destinies. Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't only change your life. It, only, it, it also changes your eternal destiny. And that is very, very important. If you want to see your loved ones, if you want to see again your children, and they are all part of the Christian family, they have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. You want to see them all? You have to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And so you will rejoice again in the second life, our eternal destiny. Amen to that? And as a spiritual leader, our pastors continue to preach the gospel. The words can impact not only those who are, who are without Jesus Christ, but also believers, inspiring them to use their evangelistic gifts to reach out to others. That's why we have these uh, uh, missionaries, and we help a lot of missionaries, because that is our mission statement in this church. We love missionaries. We love them to spread the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Peter preached his first sermon, and it was probably one of the greatest sermon ever preached. Why? He spoke of Jesus as the Messiah who had come to earth and died for our sins and rose from the dead. Some people in the crowd were convicted by this message and felt guilty, guilty because they had rejected the Messiah. So they asked Peter, what should we do? Are you there? Acts 2, 38, 39. Natin. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far, far, far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. This message is so simple, but extremely, extremely powerful. Because it was a message he had been empowered by the Holy Spirit to give. And if we want to be successful in accomplishing all that God wants us to accomplish, we will take this message that changed lives and share it continuously with others. This is a message that changed lives, not only for today, but eternal. We are able to tell people to repent, to turn away from their sins, to begin following God's ways instead of their own, and to seal their commitment. To seal their commitment in watery grave of Christian baptism. And what is the result? Their lives are changed as they are filled with the Holy Spirit and able to join us in our task of accomplishing what God wants us to accomplish. And that is to spread the saving knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Lastly, lastly, number five. Number five. We can succeed because we are given a belief that God can do anything. And I mean anything. Now, there were some phenomenal things that took place in the church immediately following this, but I want to share with you just the first part of the verse. Acts 2, ano sinabi dito sa 4 to 3? First part lang. Ano sinabi dito? And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And oh, came upon every soul. And where they were so old by what had taken place, there could be any number of reasons. They were seeing miracles happen all around them. They were seeing life change by the score. They were filled with anointed excitement. But most of all, I think they are now fully believed that everything that God has said in the past was true. It wasn't that they thought God was a liar. But until you can actually judge a promise by your senses, you don't have to have complete faith. And now you will believe that God can do anything. Now they knew without any doubt that everything God said was true and that they really could change the world around them. They could be successful as long as they continued to work toward accomplishing what God wanted to accomplish. And that is to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. God can do anything. Sa buhay po natin muna ng palataya. And I really praise God 
Kung wala ang Panginoon, siguro, hindi, I mean, siguro baka napariwara ng buhay natin. And I have seen it with some of my friends who are not Christians. I mean, they have a different lifestyle talaga. A lifestyle that is not dependent on the Lord Jesus Christ. A lifestyle that is dependent on their on their own abilities. That if they if they don't have this ability, they're not able to succeed. But us, we depend on the Lord. We depend on the grace. And we acknowledge the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in our life to help us, to bear with us. In conclusion, this, the exact same thing is true for us today. We have the same Holy Spirit they had 2,000 years ago. We have the same power available, the same vision, the same message. And But my question is, do we really believe? That is the question, really. And believe it or not, some Christians still doesn't believe and still question. My hope and prayer is now, after this message, that we will truly believe because that is the only way for us to truly have the power to succeed as a believer and as a church. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, once again, Lord, we thank you for giving us this message. Thank you, Lord, for us, for reminding us that the power to succeed is not by secular means, by big houses, money in the bank, properties, or any powerful positions in the government or in places of work. Success means accomplishing your will in our lives and from there on everything will follow by your blessing and by your grace for father without you we are not able to accomplish anything the power to succeed is through your son the lord jesus christ we love you lord we honor you we praise you in jesus name we pray amen god bless you Amen. Appreciate the message, Brother Glenn. Uh, success for us as Christians is to know and do the will of God, isn't it? Yes. And how do we know the will of God? It's from the Bible, isn't it? As God says in Joshua 1.8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou shalt may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. And the things we've studied tonight from the book of Acts gives us uh, some wonderful lessons how to have good success in God's standard. So let's keep on um, pursuing God, moving forward with Him, and God bless you all. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Take care.